What's up? Thanks for watching. Uh, we're talking a little bit about our rough end plumbing before our foundation goes in. Um, so, um, if you watch the other video on the septic, you'll know that the septic kind of stubs in right here uh, from this clean out pipe. Uh, and then it goes right into the house, right um, at the master uh, bathroom. Um, and something I did kind of on a whim on the last minute change was um, I switched from all one sewage system, meaning like black water, gray water, which means toilets, showers, sinks, things like that, to switch it and go um, separate systems, as in one four inch pipe system just to treat the sewage, which is your toilets, right, that go into the um, septic system, and then a whole nother system just for the gray water, um, which is the smaller diameter pipe, the two inch pipe, um, that we we're trenching out this way outside the house, and I don't have a plan yet of what that's gonna do, where it's gonna go, um, I need to research on how to treat it. <coughs> um, but hopefully that, that right there will make the septic system that much more robust uh, for the things that we needed to be robust for. Um, so as you can see, you can kind of see the two separate systems right now. Um, the two inch, the little older pipe is the gray water uh, system and the, obviously the large four inches is for the toilet. Um, one thing I wanted to make sure I did was um, vent the toilet, the, the black water system, the four inch system, because my plan was to vent everything above the surface of the foundation. Uh, but since I am separating um, the gray water and black water, really the the black bar is only going to be connected to toilets so i had to create these uh additional vent pipes <coughs> uh so from my understanding the reason you vent um is to prevent um like gas bubbles and nasty smells coming up through the plumbing um because you gotta think about it whenever you flush or whenever you drain water down a tube well there's air in that tube and that air's got to go somewhere and so that's why we create these vent pipes for the air to escape especially when you're doing you know you're draining um, toilets and um, your clothes washer or anything like that so that's from my understanding that's that's what's going on um, and so I plumb that right to where an exterior piece of the wall will be and then hopefully when we get the framing up we can kind of connect all the vents above the ceiling and run them out of a, of a single a single chute at the top of the roof um, <clears throat> it's kind of my plan but yeah that's that's almost a must is P traps for um, showers and tubs things like that um, sinks you can do the p traps above the foundation in the wall so that's why we're not doing them in the ground so these guys are, are obviously draining into the floor so you got to do it below the surface um, when you're putting those p traps in and i'm sticking with two inch pipe everywhere uh, i think that's overkill for my for my research you can go with one and a half maybe one inch um, but again i'm trying to just build this thing to handle whatever we throw at it uh, so I've got two inch for gray water and four inch for uh, black water. Continue down our, our line of plumbing here from the master bathroom. Uh, this plums right into um, the island in the kitchen. That's where we're going to have our sink for the kitchens in the island. So this will be the drain for it. Again, P-trap will be above the foundation on this one. 
Uh, and, and one thing to keep in mind, uh, the kind of the golden rule when you're doing um, sewage is everything drains downhill. So make sure you run all your plumbing going downhill. Um, and you can kind of look that up uh, on your level. It's, it's just where their bubble is slightly over, over the, the first line there. Um, because you want everything to go down its normal path. You want anything to slow up or level out. Um, so keep that in mind. And then we're gonna keep going. Uh, we've actually already backfilled this section in, but the plumbing uh, runs along this line and then it 45s right here. And then it comes out right here. And this is another kind of uh, code thing when you're talking about plumbing, and I don't know the specifics, um, <clears throat> but I do know when you're doing sewage drain, um, you can't have anything greater than a 45 degree turn when you're bending things. Um, again, that's just for flow so things don't get stopped up. You, They make 90 degree turns, but they're kind of elongated. You'll see some down here. Um, so whenever you're making turns, you gotta keep them at 45 degrees. I'm not sure about the reg regulations on sinks and uh, baths, gray water. I don't know, but I stuck with it just to be safe. Um, so all these have 45 degree turns on them. Uh, these two particular ones, stubs, are going up into our second floor, so these will be going through a column in our entryway because um, we're planning on having a bathroom, uh, a full bathroom up there as well. So again, black water and gray water. <coughs> This brings us to the end of the plumbing system. Uh, this is the um, bedroom one and two's bathroom in between guest bathroom. Uh, we have um, four inch for the toilet, vent for the toilet, um, going up the exterior wall. This is the gray water pipe going to the sink. Um, and actually, I didn't have to have a P-trap here, but uh, I was starting to run out of fittings. And I know this is gonna be a tight area. So this sink has a P-trap in it, uh, underground, which um, is a little overkill, but again, I was out of parts. Uh, we made it work. And then, uh, if you follow the four inch out, we uh, installed an additional clean out on this side of the slab. So um, once everything gets closed up and the slab's poured and everything's framed, if anything bad happens, they can come in just from this, this cap right here and run snakes and their little cameras and they can figure out what's going on. And there's another one of these at the other end. I think you've seen that. Um, so this is really handy. They, they suggest um, at, at least two on the extreme sides of the system. And then the last thing is the bathroom's um, bathtub, which is this guy right here, again, with the P-trap. So kind of the last thing I wanted to cover was um, just be wary of wherever you start your plumbing that kind of we talked about earlier is that you have to have it, have it going downhill. So be wary where you start it because where you end it you still want to be underneath the surface of the foundation and that that plumbing has to be going up and up and up and up so um, that might adjust how low you started off down by the septic system if i hope that makes sense because um, if you start it too high by the time you get to the other side of the house you're going to be sticking out the foundation out, out top out the top of the foundation um, so yeah and then last thing i was going to mention is we did a little pipe uh, for our fresh water uh, coming into the house from the well um, I just trenched it about a foot outside the um, the form there um, to be trenched in later to be hooked up uh, and then I have a, a pipe going up where a wall is going to be. <coughs> um, most people say that you want to bring in the, the fresh water uh, inside an interior wall and not an exterior wall just for freezing sake. Um, the further away from the, the el weather elements um, the better and then they also say uh, anywhere from a three quarter inch to a one inch pipe. We used one inch, again, just trying to stick to the, the biggest and best to keep the pressure as high as we can. Um, and then from here on, when we get it framed, we'll we'll take it and split it into the PEC system to feed all of the, uh, the fixtures going to all the appliances. Um, so yeah, that's our video on our rough end plumbing um, and a little bit of fresh water there. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it, thanks so much.